As a society relying ever so much on technology, having devices on us 24-7 has become the reality. Yet despite all our technological advancement, after 13 years since the unveiling of the original iPhone, we're still stuck with essentially two operating systems for mobile devices. Even some of the best options that value user security and privacy, like Graphene OS, are based on AOSP. We've seen countless projects over the years attempt to offer an alternative, most of which have been left in the OS graveyard. Recently, we've seen quite a bit of movement in this space with two major players, the PinePhone and Purism Librem 5. I'm sure there are others, but this video will be covering mostly those two projects. For the record, I have had the Librem 5 pre-ordered for about the last year, and I intend to order the PinePhone as well. I want nothing more than for these projects to succeed, but that doesn't mean I am not skeptical. Today, I challenge you to hear me out, and before you rage, because I'm not saying only positive things, listen, because discussing potential problems before they happen allows us as a community to help in any ways before they become actual issues, and we can actually have a higher likelihood of success. My first concern off the bat is security. Now this will make a lot of people angry, but Linux is arguably a less secure operating system than Windows. Arguably. Yes, this is a valid argument. Windows overall, according to some security experts, has a much more advanced security model than Linux. Does this mean that in the real world you are doomed if you use Linux? Absolutely not. Just because something has a stronger security model doesn't make it safer. The odds of a generic end user being affected by malware on Linux is astronomically lower than Windows because Windows is much more prevalent. On another note, just because Windows is more secure doesn't mean your personal data is any safer. Windows and privacy don't get along, whereas Linux almost universally honors the user. Moving back to phones, iOS and Android are very secure. Their lockdown nature and modern security models are arguably better than most desktop operating systems. Again, big picture, there are lots of factors. Unfortunately, these Linux phones almost entirely strip the strong security models found in both iOS and Android devices. As for kill switches, which is a main selling point for some, there are valid concerns about those as well. Although I do agree it's a great thing to offer and I would personally like this on my own phone. My second concern is software. I have read mixed information that I'll be able to use Signal on one of these phones. Not desktop Signal, but real mobile Signal that supports video and audio calls. This is how I communicate with my friends and I spent years moving them over and I'm not gonna be using a Linux phone as my daily driver if I'm unable to use Signal. This brings up the major issue with these devices. Software development for familiar applications is going to be comparatively slow to what most users are used to in the Google and Apple ecosystems. Now, there are some solutions that are being brought up and these phones can supposedly one day flash Android ROMs, but it, isn't this breaking the whole purpose of the revolutionary new third operating system with its own ecosystem? The goal, in my opinion, isn't to add isolation layers and bring Android to Linux. It's making Linux its own option and making it attractive enough for developers to hop over. Linux inherently already has this problem on desktop from a professional perspective, as many professionals don't have the tools they need available on Linux. I understand this is not the fault of Linux, this is the fault of software developers not supporting Linux, but it's still a problem no matter who we blame. At the end of the day, most people just want to be able to use the software they know works, and they don't want to worry about configuring some FOSS alternative. And these issues apply to Linux phones as well. I have never built a phone or managed a supply chain, so this is not something I'm speaking from personal experience or expertise, but it's always something we need to consider when looking at these projects. Will these phones be popular enough and profitable enough to continue production? This seems to be what ends up killing a lot of previous attempts at this project. And just for comparison, even huge companies like Amazon have been unsuccessful in entering the mobile space and making a large enough impact to justify the costs of entering the market. A good thing is both Pine and Purism have been around, they have other products, and it doesn't seem like they're starting from scratch in the privacy hardware sector. I look at the Pine phone and I think, how is it so cheap? Where were you? It's almost too cheap. And then I look at the Librem 5 and I think, oh my gosh, that's absurd for the price. I got this phone when it was under $600 and I still thought it was absurd back then. We look at the US supply chain model and it's $2,000. <laughs> what? Again, I don't have very much knowledge in this area to shed much light. I'm just saying no matter what, long-term business sustainability and how much popularity these products get is likely very vital to their future. 
Last but not least, the largest concern of all of this is getting a phone in my hands that is polished enough to consider a final product. I'm coming at this from a perspective of maybe a standard user looking for an out of the box private device. Us people who like buying a whole new phone to flash our own ROMs are extremely niche. This is not the norm. We've already seen some negativity surrounding operating systems like the Amazon Fire OS, some skinned versions of Android like what Samsung offers, and if Linux phones are on that list of, eh, it kinda sucks to use, that's a problem. On a larger topic, these Linux phones are built from scratch. This isn't just building the OS, they're building the hardware, they're building the supply chain, they're building these products with limited resources, and there are many challenges in doing this. It's natural to ask, will we ever see the final Librem 5 that's out of the testing builds. I hope so, but there are still a lot of challenges ahead of them, and if we as a community take that concern seriously and not pretend like this is just going to happen, we can better support them and offer any help we can give in advance to increase the likelihood of things being a success. <laughs> so, Henry, you are so skeptical of these phones. Why did you buy one? <laughs> well, YouTube comment section, because I want to believe in them, and hopefully you should too. Why would people not want a third option for mobile operating systems? The phone you don't want today may be the phone you get tomorrow. Speaking from someone who's using an iPad Pro as a teleprompter. As privacy advocates, we need to be supporting projects that encourage user privacy. We need to address their problems, talk about them, share them productively with these companies, and that's our job. The rest is on them to figure out. If at the end of the day, we end up with an excellent Linux phone, rejoice, we have a win. If we end up with none, who are all added to the graveyard, well, we tried and there will be other attempts. And that is all I have to say for this video. What are your thoughts on Linux phones? Are you pre-ordered? Are you skeptical? Are you hyped? What do you think? Um, I'd normally leave a card poll, but YouTube decided to eradicate that feature for no reason, so make sure to utilize the comments section instead. If you want to learn about our current go-to option for user privacy and security, check out our video covering Graphene OS. It's an absolutely amazing project. Major thanks to our patrons and, of course, all of our communities. We can't be doing this without your support. And thank you, the viewer, for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and have a lemurish day.